Hey guys, the next few minutes will be very helpful for you. We are going to learn using Python how can you write to Excel sheet. However, you have to keep entire formatting of the Excel sheet intact or as it is. For example, here is the Excel file. I have got column A, column B and my intention is to write the addition value of both of it. However, my Excel sheet do contain other sheets like sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4 and I have done bit of formatting within the sheet 1. If you see the column A, column B, column C highlighted in green color and bit of text formatting that I have done. While writing the Python code, I have to ensure while writing the output in the column C, I need to ensure the formatting of the Excel doesn't change. Let's begin. First of all, let's import the required libraries. The first one is Pandas library. I will create an alias called PD. And then I also need open Py Excel to achieve this. And I need to import one of the method called load workbook. Okay, so these are the two things which are required. Now we have to ensure where is the file on which I am going to work. So let me mention the file path. I'll go to the specific folder. I'll hold the shift key, do a right click and copy as path. And I am going to write the expression R and then paste the rest of it. Now comment what is the meaning of R here which I have explained in a lot many videos of mine. The next thing that I am going to do is create a data frame variable called df1 equals to and I will use the pd dot read excel. There is something called read excel. In this one all I have to do simply pass where my excel file is there which is there in my file path variable comma I have to ensure which particular sheet name I want to read. So I will use the parameter sheet name equals to you might have multiple sheets. So this sheet which I want to target is sheet 1. I can also define which are the columns that you would like to use within your sheet. For example, here I need all the three columns from the Excel which is column A, call B and sum. The same way I am going to write it in this one. You have to use uh, parenthesis and within the single quote I am writing call underscore a which is column a comma call underscore b which is my second column and comma I will use the third one which is nothing but sum. Everything has to be quoted either using a single quote or a double quote. So I am done with this. Now what would happen? Let's say I would like to print the df1. What this data frame variable is going to do is going to read the particular sheet from this file path and it is going to read all these columns that you have specified. Only these columns which you have specified. Let's say you have got multiple columns. Only three columns you would like to deal. You can mention whatever the columns you would like to deal with. So I got it. Let's run it and see what is the output first of all. So you can see the column A values have come, column B values have come and for the sum because we do not have any values at the moment in the Excel file, so it is coming all blank, right? It is all coming blank. Now I don't need this or let's have that for some time. I would like to have the sum value. For that I will use the data frame variable and then within square bracket within quote I am going to say sum. The sum column should be equals to sum of the column 1 and column 2. So how do you write it? So you will use the variable again and then within that you will say call a plus variable df1 and within square bracket and quote I will say call b. Now let's understand this specific line what is happening. You can understand this pretty well just by printing the output of df1. 
So the first output you saw, it was just giving exact data how it is there in the Excel. But here we have done a sum and the sum column we are adding the values of column A and column B and then let's see what is the difference. If I am going to run this code, you will see the first output had all none values, right? there was all blank. Now the second one when we have done this sum in the line number 7, you can see all the values have been printed over here. Now the goal is how can I write this value over here. Now for this, first of all let's understand how can you iterate through the DF1, then we will write it. First of all let's see how can I only iterate through this sum column, not the entire one, only this sum column so that I will find a way to write it within the Excel file. So let's see it, how to do it. So for that I'll use the for loop, pretty simple. And then I'm using a variable called r and then I'm saying in. Then there is a method. The method using which I'm going to iterate through the data frame variable that is called enumerate. Okay, this is one of the important class using which I'll be able to loop through the data frame variable. So very important one, you will understand how it works. So I am writing df1 which is the data frame variable and in that I would like to only go through the sum column. So I will mention that here. I don't want to iterate through everything. Rather I would like to go through sum1 and remember your sum value you know it has to start from the row 2 right. So this is where it should start. So there is a parameter that I will pass called start equals to and I am saying 2 start equals to 2. So what happens by doing the, you know writing like this. So let's see if I'm going to print r what's going to happen. So once you see the output of the loop print r what's going to happen what values are coming once you see that it will be pretty clear to understand line number 10 and line number 11. So the first print you saw nan right all none values are coming. Second print you saw all the values are coming and in, in this one in the loop what we are doing, we are trying to print from the row 2 or the start from 2 means because it has a column, right? The first row is a column in the Excel if you look at this is a column. Then from here it starts. So that's why I am saying start 2. So if you go back here the output what it says in the 2 we have 30, then we have 70, then we have 150, then we have 130, then we have 120. The sum of all of this. So we understood what is R. Let me introduce one more thing called index. Do you see these are the index number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that the index numbers are coming. I need the index number as well. So index comma if I write and if I print instead of R let us print only index. Let's run this. So if you see the index numbers were printed. So this represents 2 index number 2 this row represents that means it's a row number okay row number 2 row number 3 row number 4 row number 5 row number 6 if you go back with the excel if you see same thing right starts from row number 2 ends at row number 6 so the index number represents your rows here is it clear all right now the next thing is how will i write so this is not my goal i don't want to print the index numbers or r my goal is to write it inside the excel file for that you remember we have used something called open by excel load workbook and we haven't used it yet. What I am going to do, I will create a variable called a equals to and I am going to use that load workbook function. Okay, I am going to use that and here I am going to pass the file path. That means we are saying okay this is all about data frame. Data frame has done the calculation we are able to loop through that it's all fine but i have to find a way to write it to the excel file without changing its format that's why this load workbook will help to load this file to memory this load workbook will help to load this exact file to memory and we can do some modification within the memory so what do i mean by memory it's a temporary variable which is going to hold the entire excel file now A is holding the entire excel file, I don't need that, I have to deal with a particular sheet because the entire excel file contains sheet 1, sheet 2, 3 and 4. 
but I have to only work with sheet one. For that, I'm using another variable called B and I'm defining what is B, what is the value of B is nothing but sheet one. And by writing this simple code, you can define A variable contains your entire Excel file. Out of that sheet one, you assign it to variable B. Getting it? So the B variable is going to hold the entire data, whatever is there in the Excel file. It is nowhere related to data frame. Okay, data frame has done the calculation, but it is only representing the Excel file at the moment. Okay, now here in the loop, I am what I'm going to do, I'll use the B variable and I'm going to use something called cell. That means I'm saying B dot cell. In B, B means the sheet, right? In that one of the cell, what is that cell? We will define it just by using parenthesis. I'm going to define where it is, where, what is the row number? So I have to mention everything, okay? Where, which cell? You said cell, but which is that cell? So cell means, re remember any cell you pick, it will have a row number, it has a column number, right? So what is the row number here? Row number two. What is the column number here? One, two, three is the third column, right? Row number is two, column number is three, isn't it? The same concept goes here. I'm going to say row equals to, this is the parameter. Wherever you see P, right? That means parameter. Tab. And I'm going to see which contains the row number. We saw that example. So index contains the row number. So I'm going to use the index variable here, comma. Now the next parameter will be column. Column parameter, you can see. Column parameter. Column parameter is equal to what? I will predefine it because I know it is going to be three. 1, 2, 3. So it is going to be 3. So I am saying column is 3. Okay, column is 3, row is, so it is going to iterate. So the first time when it comes, the column remains constant, but the row is keep changing. You are inside a loop. So the index number will increase 1 by 1. So the row, the first time when it runs, the row value will be 2. That means it will represent here. Next time when it runs, it will represent here. Like that, it will continue. Isn't it? So here I am saying B dot cell row equals to index column is equal to 3 comma there's another parameter called value what value you would like to write here so the value is nothing but r r contains the value just now we saw it so i'm going to say value is equal to r done that's all you have to do and you are done with the loop once the loop is complete come out of the loop and all you have to do because which variable contains the entire worksheet that is a variable so i'm going to say a dot save and I am going to pass the file path parameter. That means the same path you need to save it. Done. Now look at it. Look at our Excel file, which is currently blank. Before running the code, ensure because we are using workbook, you have to ensure you close this. Look at it, everything. It is as it is. I am going to close it. Once you have closed, I am going to go to the preview and keep it open so that we can see what changes are happening here. Okay. Go here and I'm going to run the code. Now if I run the code, what happened? Exit code 0. That means everything ran properly fine. Let's go to the preview window and let's slightly refresh it. You can see all the values have come. Have my formatting changed? No, it is intact. Had it changed any of the sheets? No, the sheets are also intact. Right, so this will be a very very helpful way anytime you have to write into Excel file where you already have some previous data and you do not like to make any modifications. So this specific code is going to help you a lot. So do practice it and do comment. Were you able to write in the same way that I was able to do it? Please do comment if you are able to do it. Say yes and give it a like to the video that you are watching on my channel and please do subscribe in case you have not done it already. Thank you guys. Let's meet once again in our next content. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.